Oh, benevolent Bavarian spirit, please let me do this maneuver without damage to myself or the Grey Lady so that I can finally get the engine out. This is the impolitely named clip. And this is the pin that it holds in place. So we're just about ready to start taking out the bolts of the transmission, but if you're doing this on your own, here's a top tip. I don't want to get cluck in the face by an exhaust. We are left with only one choice, and that is to face violence with violence. Hello there. I've missed you. Now, I'm gonna get into why it's been over three months since my last episode, but not right now. Right now, what I want to talk about is engine replacements, and specifically, engine replacements for that X5. Now, if you go into YouTube and you type BMW X5 E53 engine replacement into the search bar, you won't get many relevant results. Like, there's just not that many people doing this. But, here's the thing. All of the results that you do get, without fail, have the engine and transmission coming out from the bottom of the car. And so when I was preparing for this project and I was, you know, looking into what I would need to do, I was honestly a little bit concerned because obviously I don't have a lift. I don't really have the space to put in a lift. This garage is not mine. I can't make changes like that. And even if I could, I don't think that I have enough vertical space to lift the X5 enough to get an engine and transmission out from under it. So I was starting to think of other creative ways to do it. Maybe if I take the front clip off or something like that, I could roll it out. That is, until I took a look at BMW TIS. Now TIS says that on these BMW X5s, the E53, the engines come out from the top. There is no ambiguity there. It, it, it very clearly states what you need to do to remove the engine from the top, and that is the recommended path. So that obviously solves a lot of problems for me. I don't have to figure out a way to get the X5 high enough to pull the engine and transmission out from under it. And that means that this series will be the first series on YouTube that removes the engine out of an E53 BMW X5 from the top. So I think that's pretty cool. Alright, let me show you what happened. The first step was to bring the X5 up in the air. I decided to use ramps in the front and stands in the rear. Oh, benevolent Bavarian spirit, please let me do this maneuver without damage to myself or the Grey Lady so that I can finally get the engine out. Let's begin. This decision would, of course, come back to bite me. Soon. But at least I got some entertaining footage from using EV mode on the X5 to drive up the ramps. It worked! I guess we have to say a thank you to Faf and, um... You know, I'll bring it up on the performance review. I was worried about the X5 rolling back when I lifted it, so I used wheel chocks and a push bar to hold the brake pedal down, and pretty soon the lady was safely up in the air. After you've removed the modesty cover, it's time to remove the hangers for the exhaust. Look at those brand new shocks, huh? That feels like it was a lifetime ago. Alright, so far so good. It was now time to remove the exhaust, so I set off to remove the exhaust flanges from the center pipe. This seemed to go along smoothly until I discovered that, as it always goes, someone's been in here. From the factory, the exhaust manifolds have an embedded stud, and the center pipe slides oh over gosh, these studs and is secured by nuts. When this setup meets harsh conditions or a particularly impatient tool holder, the studs break off. The solution in that case is to drive the studs out and replace them with nuts and bolts. Actually, this is not that bad of an idea as long as you do it correctly, which is to say, you put the bolt through the top, use copper antices, and proper hardware. Unfortunately, none of those practices were followed and my initial feelings of success were quickly dampened when I realized that the bolts were turning with the nuts, but not coming apart from them because they had seized. And all that my attempts to separate them were doing was rounding them off. So, a quick sit rep. There are four bolts that connect the two exhaust manifolds to the rest of the exhaust underneath the car. Three of the four bolts are cooperating. The fourth one has decided to round itself off. So I went to the auto parts store and I bought two different types of tools that are supposed to help with rounded bolts. Neither of them worked. Despite their promises of being able to tackle bolts with up to 85% rounded, whatever that means, we are left with only one choice. And that is to face violence with violence. I really didn't want it to be this way. This is the bolt. It won't move. After cutting a big slot into the bolt with my angle grinder, I tried to use my huge ratchet and a draggling socket to break the bolt free from the nut. 
After literal hours of trying to make that work, I had a bad idea. You're gonna absolutely send it on a Pittsburgh regular ass socket? Absolutely. This is a good idea that can't end badly at all. <laughs> wow, that took forever. All right. Oh my god. What a pain in the ass. On the second exhaust manifold, I ran into a different issue. This time, the bolt didn't round off, but it also refused to separate under any circumstances. And because of the way that the nut was positioned, I was really enjoying my time trying to break the nut and bolt apart. And after literal hours of working on it, the only thing that I had achieved was becoming upset. Somebody did this to me. Somebody did this to me. Didn't put f***ing copper paste on this shit, and now these bolts are f***ing stuck. I'm very tired of this. I'm very tired of this. This is getting very frustrating. There's no clearance to get a socket in here. And I can't get a wrench in there because it's gonna cam out because it's too much torque for the wrenches. Don't f***ing talk to me. I'm upset. Finally, I decided that enough was enough and it was time to call for help. And so, my good friend and business partner Andrew showed up to introduce me to a new tool that I could use in the shop. Fire. <sighs> After I heated the nut to just a bit hotter than the temperature of the sun, I was able to use one of my wrenches to hold it in place and blast the bolt out. A lot of rust and metal shavings came out, but finally, after literally 20 hours trying to take this assembly apart, it was out. I used fire! <laughs> and I didn't burn the car down! We have to take off these mounts here. That's, uh, that's the exhaust off there. Is that it wasn't Lion King. It was a whim away. So I've got Andrew here. There's Andrew. Now that we got the exhaust bolts off and part of the exhaust mounts on the mid side of the engine, mid side of the car off, now it's time to remove them fully from the back. Let's do it. I don't want to get clucked in the face by an exhaust. I have a feeling I might get clucked in the face by an exhaust. Okay. All right. I think we're free. Andrew and I were hoping to remove the exhaust as one single piece by pushing it forward a bit, and then once it was free of the rear bumper, pulling it out. It turned out, however, that there wasn't enough space to remove the exhaust that way, and since I didn't want to chance the possibility of facing even more forever seized bolts on the midsection, we took a different approach. I started to take off the rear bumper, while Andrew entertained himself with other activities. Eating fools and chess. Hell yeah, brother. The bumper isn't held on by much. A few small screws on the wheel arches and two big T55 bolts on the bumper reinforcement. And here comes the exhaust. And finally, it was time for the exhaust to leave the building. <laughs> and then come back. Well, that was the easy part. <laughs> That was pretty much the last time I touched the car in 2023, and for a long time after that too. You will know by now that I took some time off after the eve of the new year. There was simply put too much going on between work stress, this project, as well as the included filming, editing, and releasing on a weekly schedule, and many, many other factors. I had to make the difficult decision to stop. There is an old truth out there. If you don't give yourself a chance to rest, your body will do it for you. And usually when that happens, we call that burnout. Now in the meantime, I tried to stay away from cars to the extent that I could. Of course, during this time, both the Mazda and the Toyota needed some assistance, and I drove Faf around to try and calm the storm around me. It was really only in late February that I found myself being able to spend enjoyable time working on cars again, which is why this is coming out in April. Now, I could go on about this for a while longer, but I think we're getting into parasocial territory, so let's get back to the X5, where I'm just about to have a look at what's what now that the exhaust is out. So let's have a look. Here is a flex disc, here is a drive shaft, and 
Here is the transfer case. On either side of this flex disc is a flange. Here's the drive shafts one, the transmission ones on this side. We need to remove the bolts that hold the transfer case flange, not the drive shaft one. One other thing that you really, really should do is mark everything. So let me go get a Sharpie. We just need to make sure that when, it, when we put this back together, it goes exactly like this rather than, you know, uh, 120 or 240 degree rotation. That's math. It's an 18 millimeter bolt. Excellent. The drive shaft is now free of the transmission, which means we can proceed to removing the front drive shaft. So the next step is to disconnect the front drive shaft. However, in order to do that, you have to drop this plate so that you can get access to it and remove this front sway bar. This is like one of those, I can't believe you did this BMW type things. All of these bolts, which hold the skid plate in place, have a torque rating, which that's fine, but they're also torque to yield and not reusable. That's insane. Anyway, let's get them off. They're all 16 millimeters. Look at that. That is really gross. What? Oil leaks? Oil leaks? On my BMW? You got any goodies in here? Ooh. Ignition coil boot. I wondered where that went. This probably looks just like a regular skid plate, but no. It isn't. On this car, this is structural. BMW explicitly forbids you from driving this car without this attached. Ah, good. Maybe that can be cleaned up. Either way, that's not a task for the right now. The next thing that we need to do is remove this front drive shaft from the flex disc. And the way that this works is slightly different than the main flex disc. On the main flex disc, you have a bolt and a nut on both sides. On this flex disc, you have a bolt and a nut on, on the drive shaft side, but on the differential side, it actually goes straight into the flange. Since my front wheels are on a ramp, I can't, you know, rotate this to get at the correct bolts. Instead of taking it off at the front drive shaft side, I'm actually going to take it off at the differential side. And that shouldn't make a difference because then we can still pull the drive shaft back and out of the way. We mark here, here, and here. There we go. And the drive shaft will move back slightly. There's really not a ton of clearance, but there is what should probably be enough. It was at this point that I noticed a glaring issue with my plan. There's a front differential there, and that's the left side axle. And here's the right side axle. You'll notice that it goes through the oil pan, which means that to remove this engine, I have to disconnect these axles, which means that I have to take off this wheel and all of these control arms. Now, since the car is facing nose in, that's going to be a real challenge. Obviously, as you can tell, there has been another complication. If I have to remove the axles from this car, which I do, I have to remove parts of the suspension and the wheels. And if I have to do that, I'm obviously not gonna be able to move the car back in order to fit the engine hoist there, obviously. So I'm left with three options. Yeah, no. Two out of the three options that I present here are completely insane. The first option involved a convoluted, impossible series of steps, and the second one involved leaving the lady halfway out of my garage for a month. Obviously, neither of those were gonna work. There was only one realistic option. Here it is. And finally, option number three, which is to push the X5 out of the garage, rotate it 180 degrees, and push it back in, with the nose facing out this time. Obviously, there are some challenges with that. Everyone tells me that I am a strong boy, and I believe it, but I'm not strong enough to do all of that by myself. So I've enlisted some help, which should be arriving oh, in about 10 minutes. Hello, hey. friends. Say hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Let's right. do this thing. Adventure time. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that pace is very nice. Yeah, that's a great pace. <laughs> While the boys and I worked out the specific angles to get the big beast into the garage, my other friend Pat arrived in his X3 to help us out. It's really true what they say. Many hands make short work. Get the parking, please. Hell yeah. Nice. Thanks to everyone. Uh, and that's, that's Pat.
team grew by one. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. With the X5 now facing the correct direction, it was time to get back to disassembly. So check it out. This is the center support bearing. This is a bearing that kind of Make sure that the drive shaft is able to spin correctly and also supports it from the middle. We need to take this off. However, this is not just straight up bolted on. If you take this off, you'll notice that the bolt hole is slotted. So what we need to do is actually mark it because we need to make sure that we put the bracket for the CSB on in exactly the same place. Now that that's done, we can take it off. So we need to make sure that we hang this up. I'm going to drop this heat shield down first. So I've just attached these nuts to these studs here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some mechanics wire and we're going to hang up this drive shaft. And there we go. The drive shaft is now tied away so that we can drop this mount and start taking the transmission out. By the way, as I was saying, this is a slotted hole. So you saw the studs, you slid, slide this on and then you put the bolt on where it's supposed to have the appropriate amount of preload. But this, this does not look happy. Put that on the list to do. Back to the transmission. So this is the transfer case. This is what grabs power from the transmission and actually sends it forward. That's where the uh, front drive shaft is. I'd really like to remove them as one piece. They're not super, super heavy. I just don't want to break things, and obviously I have to be aware of the fact that doing work on a car while it's on jack stands is quite different than doing work on the car when it's on the lift. Anyway, taking off the plug for the transfer case and the other one. This is a servo motor. Um, if your transfer case goes bad, you have to take this apart and replace a little wheel in there. I did that a few years ago. I mean, I don't have any reason to suspect that it's gone bad again, so I'm not going to do that now. And this is where things get really fun. So, let's look at this together. So, here is the shifter. That In the cabin, the shifter is there. There is a clip here that holds the rod onto the actual shifter inside the vehicle. So, the gear lever, that's what that, that's what that is right there. That actuates this rod, which goes forward against the pivot point, and that actually shifts the gears within the transmission. We need to make sure that we get those disconnected because otherwise the transmission isn't going to come down. All right, well, I took the clip off. That's, it needs to be replaced anyway. Nice. That's the easy part. The difficult part is going to be really tough to show you. We're going to need to take all of this and drop it down just a little bit so that I have more access to reach my hands in there and unclip everything. Okay. Here, I ran into my next seized obstacle. Now this clip is known by some colorful names in the BMW community, one of which uh, implies that it's a female dog. But the difficulty with this clip is usually in unclipping it from the transmission. But what I'm experiencing now is that the rod on this clip appears to be seized to the bushing on the shifter arm, which makes it very difficult to drop the transmission, unless I take off the shifter arm completely. Luckily, disconnecting the shifter arm is not that big of a hassle, it's just we have to do it out of order. Remove the shifter, unclip the surround, remove the sound insulation, and right here are two bolts. That's, that's really it. So we're just about ready to start taking out the bolts of the transmission and subsequently the transmission itself. But if you're doing this on your own, here's a top tip. Make a template. There are 11 bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. Some of them are E12, some of them are E14. It's important that you put the bolts back where you found them. Now, this is of course assuming with a fairly decent grain of salt that the bolts that are in my car are the correct ones. As I mentioned before, this car has had the transmission replaced and to be frank, I can't be 100% certain that all the bolts went back to the same place. But we're gonna try. And if we see something very off, then we'll stop to reconsider. Let's do this. 
If you're wondering what the floor jack was for, I was trying to put pressure on those pins to get them out. That didn't work out. Alright, I think that's probably good. Before I take the transmission bolts out, I do want to just do two real quick things. The first one is to disconnect the clutch slave cylinder. Now we should be able to pull out the slave cylinder. Tuck this away from here and we'll just make sure that as the transmission comes down, it's not, you know, snagging or anything. So, as you can see the bolts start over there and they go all the way around and across. Break it loose, continue on down. This next one's a big boy, it's an E14. That is not an agreeable bolt. Okay. This is one of those cases where I'm no longer asking. I just wanted to let you know that you will be coming off. It's a professional courtesy, but like I said, I won't be asking. Our bottom three bolts are cracked. Let's take them out and put them in the template. So, those are the three bolts out. As you can see, I've arranged them how they are in the car. That's gonna make it easier for me to reassemble it later on. Now we are getting into the realm of not easy, totally not at all fun ones, which you may have guessed are neither easy nor fun. Okay, the next one is there. One of these billet housing bolts holds on a bracket. That leaves us with just five bolts left. We're saving the best for last, so let's move to the other side of the car. We're on the passenger side. Just like we disconnected the wiring harness on the transfer case, we need to do so again on the transmission. This is the reversing light switch. That's good, now we can proceed. You see this? Yeah, that's one of the transmission bolts, and there are actually a few above that one too. So obviously these are gonna be a bit of a challenge to get out. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's a lot of torque lost in the U-joint. Well, that's why we have six feet of extensions that I bought for this. Yeah! This is my reward to myself for having run 10 miles today. So I am well. I don't need help at all. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, watch this. This is gonna be insane. <laughs> Look at that. Yes! I have made an interesting discovery. There is only one bolt left. The other ones are missing. It seems somebody took a shortcut before. As you are undoubtedly now aware, removing those bolts, especially the ones at the top of the transmission tunnel, is a humongous pain in the ass. So often, what ends up happening is that when somebody removes them to take the transmission out, they will not put those bolts back in because it's hard. I'm not a huge fan of shortcuts, like, unless you absolutely have to. Like, if there is literally no way to put that bolt back in, I would get it. But there has to be. I guess that means that I just need to remove that one bolt, which I actually think I'm going to be able to get to from the top. And then we can take the transmission out. Oh no! It's so close, and yet so far. Oh my god. Uh, all right, you can watch how this process works, because I don't think you've seen it. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that I did that completely blind. Please. <sighs> <sighs> That's pretty.
probably ruined. <laughs> the transmission is out. <sighs> I think I broke my slave cylinder somehow. I got trapped back into place. The reason I have this lovely floor mat is because uh, the roof leaks and it's been raining a lot and, well, I don't like to get my jeans wet. This is the impolitely named clip. And this is the pin that it holds in place. Now I can see when I'm rotating this clip that this pin does not move. Which is not supposed to be the case. It's actually supposed to move with the clip. So it's come apart or due to corrosion or whatever. You know what's funny is uh, when I replaced this transmission, I bought these for the guy who was replacing them. And these look like they're original. So I don't know where those went. But anyway, let's get these out. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. These are supposed to be greased when you put them in. Inch of the trash that goes. Anyway, now we can remove the shifter arm. And, uh, wow, that's really bad. This is supposed to be pretty, pretty firm. You know, this is, this is super loose. So I'm going to go ahead and order the parts of this and or the parts for this. We're going to rebuild the shifter. Make for a nice shifting experience on this unique shiftable BMW X5. Now we're going to bid the transmission a brief goodbye. Goodbye transmission, briefly. And begin the task of taking out the engine. But not in this episode. I, I, I know, but, but, but honestly, just filming this episode has, has taken quite some time. So I, I want to get something out to you so that, you know, you, you know I'm still alive. And um, I think that... Uh, by the time I'm finished recording this, I'll have like 300 gigabytes of footage that I'll need to sort through. So it's going to take me time to do that. However, that having been said, this is one of the most difficult parts of removing the engine on this car. It is not the most difficult part, but it is a pretty substantial one. Working within the constraints that we have, namely that I don't have a lift, this was a real challenge. Hopefully the rest of it doesn't fight me as much. And when I say that, I know already it's going to fight me and where it's going to fight me because the hub is fused to the axle and the axle nut has completely disintegrated into nothing. But I already have a solution for that. So until next time, thank you for watching and thanks to all these wonderful names right here for supporting the channel on Patreon. And my name is Sam. That's the great lady. This is a desperately needing to be rebuilt shifter. And this is Skelly's Garage. We'll see you again soon.